Hi guys, it's Carrie with Creatively Carrie, and um, I'm just going to be prepping my palette here um, for some painting. So I'm just going to get uh, some paint on this palette, and hopefully some people will be joining here in just a few minutes. Whatever, give everybody a chance to log on. some white. So um, I thought for to tonight's tutorial um, I would paint a um, wooden uh, wall or door hanger. Just depends on where you want to put it. Um, and um, it's going to be this wooden door, or the, this wooden hanger is in the shape of a flower. Um, so I'm going to um, give it some personality here and paint it um, probably like a sunflower. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of um, put my camera down towards my working space here. Um, so just give me a second and so you guys can be a little bit. See a little bit better about what's what's going on. Okay, there we go. All right. So again, we are here in my studio, uh, my home studio tonight, and I was just going to be doing a fun little tutorial on painting a wooden door hanger. Um, as I said, it's in the shape of this um, flower. So. We normally paint on canvas, but um, you know there are other surfaces um, that artists do paint on, and one of them being wood. And so, what I did um, for this piece is um, I went ahead and took a product called Gesso, and I pre-primed this um, wooden door hanger uh, with the Gesso um, for a couple of reasons. Um, one, it's going to kind of help um, smooth out my wooden surface, um, and two, which is probably the most important part, is is that it seals the wood so that um, I'm not using a lot of my extra colored paint. Um, so the gesso is really good at sealing the wood um, and, and getting the surface prepped for painting. Um, so. That's really what you want to do with um, um, porous surfaces, is you really want to seal them and treat them uh, with something like gesso so that you can um, have a little bit more freedom of, of working with your paints. Um, gesso is also used to cover canvases um, so that the fabric isn't so porous that it soaks up all the paint all at once um, in one location so that you're able to kind of move it around and manipulate it a little bit better. Okay, So um, for my purposes here tonight um, I was going to go ahead and turn this into a sunflower. So I am just going to grab some yellow. Now um, yellow by itself is pretty um, and if you were to paint uh, you know flat color onto the wood without the gesso um, it wouldn't be as vibrant. It'd be very pale because it would soak into the wood and the wood would come through. So again, with this gesso, um, having pre-primed the wood with the gesso, it's going to look a lot more vibrant and, and when you're working with it. But this, this yellow is a little bit too sunny for me. Um, I want something a little bit um, warmer. So I'm going to just pick up a little bit of red and I'm going to work it in with this yellow. Um, so that it just gives that yellow just a little bit more um, of, a, of a golden color. Um, and so you can kind of see the difference here. I have the bright yellow here and then this um, warmer tone of yellow. You can see the difference as to how it kind of gets on there and warms up. Now with the gesso on here, I am able to have more time to blend my colors um, because it's not soaking into the wood so fast. Okay, so I have this center petal here. 
Let me put a little bit more red into that because I really want that to be. There we go. Really like that darker kind of tone. Okay. So I'm just going to spend a couple um, minutes here um, making up my my paint color. Um, and if you are watching, just go ahead and let me know that you're watching. Say hi. Um, let me know what you're doing if you're just hanging out at home. So, awesome. Okay. Also, feel free to hit those uh, emoticons and let me know um, how you're feeling this Friday evening. If you're enjoying your time at home with the family. I was working outside today doing some um, home improvement projects. <sighs> Just being able to be home these days is allowing for um, my husband and I to get a little bit more stuff done around the, our property, which is nice. Um, always feels good when you can accomplish things that you've been uh, putting off for a while. So. I'm going to go back into a couple of these little petals, put some darker tone on them. So again, um, just working with wood, you want to make sure that um, it's sealed, unless of course you know you're going for, um, you, you don't mind it not being sealed and it's going to soak up twice as much paint, um, but the gesso is the way to go on that because you can see that my strokes are just really fluid, I'm able to spread the paint around. I don't have a whole lot of um, dragging or dryness to it because it's just really ready and for the paint here. So I'm just going to finish this up. I'm going to need a little more yellow. I am um, obviously going to be painting the center of my flower um, a different color, so that's why I'm not worried about um, getting in, into the middle there with all of this color. Again, it'll just save a little bit of my paint so that I don't have to um, use too much of my paint up. I'm going to save this middle area for that. Um, now on this particular um, wooden door hanger, um, it's, it's about a half an inch thick. So I do want to take some of this yellow uh, along my edges here and paint in those edges. So. While the top here is drying, 
I am just going to work some color into these edges. I did seal the edges again with the gesso, so Again, you're just, I just want to, to warm up my color here with a little bit of red in with that yellow so that it just wasn't uh, like a really sunny yellow. I wanted more of a, a deeper tone. So just going to work on these edges. Um, again, if you kind of get some extra little brush strokes in there because this isn't quite dry yet, you can um, um, go back in and work in some extra other color. Always a good idea to also remember to um, protect your workspace. <laughs> so that's why I have some paper down underneath this project because, you know, as careful as you think you might be, um, there's always those moments where it goes in places you didn't plan. finish this up here pretty quickly um, again this being a door type hanger it's, it's, it's wooden you can use it on a door like a bedroom door or you can hang it on a wall um, if you wanted to do um, something like this outside say on your porch or um, in your garden area it's totally um, completely doable you can um, do that. I just going to recommend that you have um, some kind of sealer um, to protect it. So once you get done with the painting process and it's all dried and cured out, um, you can certainly um, take a spray sealer and seal it so it just protects it from the weather and the sunlight. Uh, sunlight is hard on things, especially paintings. <laughs> so you just want to make sure that you're um, going to do that. So um, I'm looking at this and I can still see some streaks inside my um, painting pro um on the surface here so I am just going to add a little bit more color a little bit more paint over the top of some of this hope everybody out there is doing well things are going okay everybody is staying healthy um, Once again, if you are watching and uh, you have a moment, you can touch one of your emoticons and let me know how this is going for you. You can make a comment if you want. Let's see. All right. 
So you can see there that I've got some a lot of more red in this one, so I'm going to add back in some yellow, and because it is still wet, I can do that. I can blend a little bit here. And work that in. So what my plan here is is to have um, some contrasting colors um, so that I have a light and a dark um, and I will um, outline the petals a little bit so each one will have their own space in this flower so they'll kind of be individual and they won't get lost. I'm going to need a little bit more yellow here. So as the petals start to dry, um, I'm going to put on a second layer. So it just takes some of those brush strokes out. Catherine. Um, the wooden cutout came from a place called um, Craft Creations, and Creations is spelled with a K. Um, and um, they're in the Midwest, and um, they do several different types of these cutouts. They'll do the flower. Um, they had some wine glasses cut out of plywood. Um, and they were, they're awesome. Um, it was really cool to, um, uh, work with them, you know, as far as ordering some things and having them ship it, they shipped it all in, in a nice package. So it was, it was really nice and protected. Um, so yeah, so they did this cutout. Um, they're not cheap. So, you know, if you're, if you're buying one or two things, it's probably not a bad deal. I think I paid... Uh, fifteen dollars for the wooden cutout um, but um, yeah so depending on you know um, the size and the item that you're having shipped you know just depends on what they're going to be charging for it but yeah that's where I got it from it was a craft creations um, they'll do custom orders too so, okay. Oh, 
So, um, I'm going to go ahead and rinse my brush right now. And I am going to take this brush and now I'm going to decide um, the color for the um, lines of my petals. So I think I'm going to add some white and yellow because I just want to brighten that yellow up just a bit so that it does look different, has a contrast from this darker color. So, and I'm going to hold this brush um, vertical and I'm just going to try to gently pull a line along here. So, I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me see if I can hold this up a little bit. So you can see that I did that line for that petal um, so that it just identifies uh, the edge of that petal. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to come actually on this side of the petal and I'm going to go in like so. Now I want to um, create some depth with these petals. So I'm actually going to skip the next petal and um, then I'll do skip one and do that, then one after that. Um, and the reason that is, is because I will be creating like one petal is behind the others. So it's going to give it a dimension, like a, a 3D feel to it. Some petals are going to be in front and some petals will be in back. So you can kind of see that there's some depth there. That there's some of those um, petals are going to be behind some other petals, and that's what creates the depth in the helps create the depths in the flowers. So now the petals that are going to come forward, I'm going to add just a little bit of brightness to them because they are getting more of the light than the petals in the back. So the petals in the back are going to be darker. Okay, so I'm just going to come in here lightly, pull some lighter color, and because the surface is still a little bit of that um, surface is still damp, I can still blend a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to be doing some blending. And of course, if at any time it went just a little bit too light, just grab a little bit more red and work it in. Gently. There we go. Okay. So that is one petal. Then I'm going to move this around so that I can get to this other petal. I'm going to have... So I'm going to keep rotating this, it's just a little bit easier for me to uh, do some of that blending that way, so I'm not having to turn my hand in a really odd <laughs> position. Add a little bit of white, a little more yellow. So you can kind of start to see, um, you know, as you um, pull, if you have lighter petals, they're going to come forward and your darker petals are going to 
um, recede. They're going to go into the background. Keeping with the theme here, yellow, a little bit of white, and some red. pretty good I think okay so um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to try to give these petals a chance to dry and so I'm gonna start um, working um, on the center of the flower um, I can see I've got just a little bit of a streak of something there I just want to there we go clean that up and so um, I am going to find a brush right over here that is um, rather well used and I'm not particularly worried about, um, you know, mashing it or mushing it into a different position. Um, so I've got one right here and I, I keep my um, old brushes around just for that reason to have a brush around that I don't really care what's going to happen to the bristles I don't need it to maintain a sh its shape um, I can just basically do anything with it um, and so this little brush here he's actually um, lost all of his um, covering on the wood handle and his bristles are have seen better days for sure so um, I'm going to be doing what I call a mushing action I'm mushing this paintbrush against the wood um, and so that's kind of how we're going to create the texture um, of this, that the sunflower center. Um, it has a lot of texture in it. Um, it's kind of rough. If you've ever been up close to a sunflower, it's rough and it's got a lot of little pits in it. So I am actually going to be using um, a burnt umber and a black. And I'm going to mix those two together. Um, because they really create this really warm chocolate um, so that it's the best of both worlds not just a flat brown and not just a flat bat black so I literally been mushing this brush into these two paint colors and blending together to get this uh, chocolate brown and so now um, I need to decide kind of where this center of my flower it lives so I'm just going to kind of start mushing a circle and rem because the acrylic is wet, remember it's going to um, blend together a little bit. So you are going to have a little bit of a mess, but that's okay because we're going to build on it. Okay, so you can see how my... center is kind of coming out here okay um, what are my favorite paints to use okay so Catherine is asking me my favorite paints um, you know um, I like the fluid acrylic paints um, and I get minor from um, kind of a, a mixture because sometimes you don't always get the same colors from the same companies but art alternatives is an awesome brand 
Um, I also like, uh, I will use Blick, um, particularly when I'm um, in need of a certain color that I can't find anywhere else. Um, so, yeah, so I'll use a Blick, um, it, they call it a student grade or an economy grade paint, fluid acrylic paint. Um, and those are, those two are probably my, my go-tos, my favorites. Um, now you've got tons of craft paints out there like um, Deco Art, um, Plaid makes some, Folk Art makes some, um, and they come in those little two ounce bottles. They're the same fluid acrylic paint, um, but some of them can be a little more um, watery um, and you don't get the same um, kind of blending abilities that you do with acrylic paints. So. Uh, the the like the Blick and the Art Alternatives. Art Alternatives is sold by Michaels, I think. Um, so yeah, so you're gonna those are the the ones that I like using. Um, so again, I'm here and I'm kind of mushing my the center of my flower here. So um, I'll hold this up once again. I'll kind of I'm kind of wanting to fill this out just a little bit. Um, And so when I show you this, you'll be able to see the texture. I'm going to kind of get as close to my phone as I can. But you'll be able to see the, the texture in there, mushy, mushy, mushy texture. Um, and that's really coming from that really well used um, paintbrush that I have. Um, and I just really love how the texture comes out on that. Okay. So again, because the surface was wet, the colors are blending together. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for that um, to dry and then I will do a second wave of that brown color um, as it when it gets a little bit more dry. Um, I don't know that my petals are quite dry for some highlights but we can try to throw them in there. So I'm going to rinse this brush. Okay. And um, I will pick up this brush here. And I'm going to take some pure white. So I'm really not wanting to have this be too um, mixed with yellow or anything like that. Um, so I can see this little guy here is kind of um, dry, but I, my brightest, again, my brightest flowers are going to be the ones that have the yellow that kind of stand out. So I am just going to take a little bit of this white and I'm going to come from the center and I just want to do a little bit of a highlight on these petals. I don't want to get too crazy. You can have some come out from the center if you want. Okay, but you don't want to get too overloaded because if you if you start to get too overloaded with your highlights, you're gonna lose um, the petal. Right? These are just supposed to be gentle, gentle reminders. So I'm gonna jump over here. I'll do the same thing on this one, and I'm very lightly um, touching this flower because the surface is still wet. So I can still do a little bit of blending. And again, I'm just really wanting to just highlight these petals just a little bit so that they'll stand out. Just give it those petals with just a touch of personality. Okay. And then we'll do one more here. Blend that a little bit. Awesome. Okay. 
think what I'll do is I'll also throw some highlights on my darker petals, but just even less than what I did on the regular petals. So just going to grab some white. Going to keep my highlights to the top of the petal because as we get closer, there would be shadows towards the base because they're behind. So I don't want to change that. If you wanted to, you could even put in some more um, shadow in there closer, which we may we may still do just as we go here. Okay. So I have my my highlights for my petals on there. Cool. So what I can kind of do is show you what I'm talking about, the depth in your petal, petal depth in the petals and the ones that are behind. So I'm going to take some of this um, yellow and red and make my deep orange color again. And then I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that brown, the original brown, the flat brown, not the one I mixed, but, um, and I'm going to add it to that. And I'm going to create a shadow color. And I'm just going to gently pull that shadow color out. And then what that does is that creates a contrast um, for the lighter petals so they stand out a little bit more. Um, and that's what creates the look of 3D. That's what makes things look 3D is because they will create, they will have shadows and they will have highlights. Where the light is touching the brightest and where it is not touching the brightest. And it's creating a dark edge along I'm going to do a little bit more again, just another mixture of those colors. So I'm creating that shadow color. Go back in. So you can kind of see how the contrast starts to help those petals come together and create depth. Okay, all right. Um, and you can do as many layers to this process as you want. You know, if this if this isn't enough, you can always go back over it at any point in time. So I'm gonna get my beat up brush again. And um, I am going to start trying to layer on a little bit more of my brown that I have. So I'm actually going to be picking up quite a bit of paint on this little brush. He's pretty thick there. And I'm just going to try to start building on what I had. And creating little bit more of a deeper color covering up that background that's kind of peeking through right now. So just like the petals, your center is going to have some highlights 
and some shadows. So what you probably want to do is, um, you know, as the in the center, as it comes around along this edge here, it's going to be darker in that area. It just that's just the way it happens. The light doesn't play there very well. Um, it doesn't hit certain things there very well. So that's probably where you want to pay most of your um, attention. Now with this being um, like a wall or door hanger, you can add the hardware um, after everything's um, cleared out clear, um, and dried, right? Cured out and ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decide um, in my center of my flower where my light source is coming from and that's where I'm going to put my light color. So that is, once again, just taking my beat up old little brush, picking up some white paint, on it and again I'm doing it pretty thick I've got it a lot in here and then I think what I'm going to do is probably stick to my highlights coming from the top so I am just going to build a little bit of a highlight in here on the surface of this flower um, uh, flower center Okay, remember I'm dabbing because I wanted to create a lot of texture in here. And because the center of a sunflower is very textured, has so much texture in there. All those little pits for the seeds to be, right? So I really wanted to create that texture. So. Um, I'm just going to go back in and really kind of fuzz out my edge here. I really want it to be more of a softer transition, so I'm just going to downplay the edges of the white, the lighter color, just a little bit. And then I will hold this up so that it's quite not so stark, but you guys can see what is going on. Okay. All right. Now I will hold it up. So, yeah. So basically, when you're painting on wood, the big thing is to seal it so it doesn't soak up all your paint all at once. Um, and you have to apply dozens of coats of color. Um, and then you want to have a plan for your um, highlights and shadows so that you can create the depth in the flower. All right, so there you go, guys. This is my tutorial for tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to learn a little something, um, and I hope to see you guys again next Friday. I will be doing another live tutorial um, Friday nights at 7, Wednesday afternoons at 3. I also do lives, and then tomorrow night I am doing a Zoom painting class. Um, and we are going to be doing that painting right there. So I'm going to show everybody in my class how to paint uh, the Golden Paradise Beach. Um, and um, I can put into this um, post on Facebook the link to that painting if you guys want. Um, it's $15 to, um, to join. If you go on eventbrite.com, you can find the event there. You get $15 and you get to, I will send you the link. And then you don't have to have a canvas to paint on if you have, you know, paper or wood or um, any other kind of surface that you want to play with. You are welcome to do that and join us. And so, yeah, so I'm doing a painting party tomorrow night. $15 gets you the link um, and the instructions with me. About an hour and a half, I guess. Um, and uh, I really had fun tonight, guys. This was really cool. And I hope you did, too. And I will talk to you guys soon. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye.